I'm finally getting back to my video on uh, how I made the fading LED hat. So um, in the next couple series, we're going to talk about op amps. Op amp is the key, the little IC chip there, and talk about how I'm making these uh, LEDs fade in and out rather than just blink as everyone else is doing on the playa. So stay tuned for that. Well, today I'm going to be talking about op amps, but before I get into op amps, I want to talk a little bit about the voltage divider. We're going to see these things all over today, so you really, it's important to understand how it works. So a voltage divider basically just takes um, an input voltage, runs it through some resistors, and then pulls an output voltage in between those resistors. So um, the way this works is that there's the, all the current is going through those two resistors and you know V equals IR um, determines how much current that is. And that same amount of current has to be going through each resistor. So you can figure out the potential of every resistor just uh, above every resistor just by solving that V equals IR equation. Now I've done the solution here for the setup that we have above basically with two resistors, we can find the output voltage based on the input voltage just by taking R2 divided by the sum of the resistors. Now, um, this is the way things work, you know, in theory and actually the way things actually work. But when you start trying to put a load onto that voltage, uh, you add more resistance. So uh, it, in, in actuality, as you, as you set up a network like this, your output voltage will be less than um, the predicted value. But if you can keep from putting a load or plug that voltage out into a high impedance um, uh, input, then you can get very close to uh, V out is equal to that ratio of V in. So this is extremely useful. And we're gonna see that op amps have very high impedance. Now I'm not gonna build a circuit that has um, a, a chain of resistors, but I wanted to show you this um, right here, which maybe I'll get into focus. This is a potentiometer. Basically, a potentiometer has a resistance across it, and uh, um, and and uh, uh, acts kind of like a, a voltage divider, in that you you basically get a third wire in there, somewhere between. The resistance of the other uh, between the two resistors um, uh, that make up the potentiometer. So in this case we have uh, about 900 kilo ohms, it's supposed to be close to one mega ohm resistance in that potentiometer, and by turning this dial we can split it up so that it's roughly you know split between like if we put it halfway 500 kilo ohms on each side or so if we turn it more to one side, then we'll get a resistance, higher resistance on one side of the central wire than on the other side. And this lets us dial in a voltage we want. So how have I wired this up? Well, I wired this into my trusty power supply. This is a great little Jameco kit power supply, um, which uh, I put together, um, really easy. A very simple first project and not too expensive. Uh, so if you're starting out, I recommend something like this rather than buying a, a new power supply. And this power supply is really great because it basically puts a positive voltage and a negative voltage out. And they're both independently dialable. There's two potentiometers here that you can dial in between about, I can't even remember the range. It goes at least up to 15 volts in each direction. And so what you have are a common sort of um, ground or middle potential. You have a positive V out and a negative V out. Whoops, which I just knocked off. Anyway, so I'm pulling in the positive to, to one of the lines here on my breadboard, the negative voltage to one of the lines here, and then the, the sort of ground level right here. So I've got this wired to go between plus five, I've set it to plus five and minus five volts 
And by turning the potentiometer, I can sweep out that whole range. And I'm referencing it to ground. So I turn it down. I can go down to negative 5 volts, approximately negative 5. I s turn it back up. I can swing out all the way to the range of about plus 5 volts. So, and I'm referencing all that. The negative terminal of my multimeter is connected up to the the ground, that's not ground, but the middle potential of my power source. So this, this is going to be good for, for running experiments. We're going to be able to tune that potentiometer to get whatever output voltage we want. So, so now that we've done the preliminaries, let's talk a little bit about op amps. So got an op amp diagram right here. A friend of mine called the op amp the duct tape of analog electronics, and I really like that. Um, basically, it's it's an interesting device. It's an amplifier, um, but it's used in a lot of different ways. So, um, first, I want to talk a little bit about the inputs. So, um, there are two inputs, basically a, a non-inverting input and an inverting input. And this op amp is basically going to compare it, look at the difference between these two voltages. Now, in addition to that, you have some power supply. You've got a positive supply and a negative supply, and it's gonna need this to, to produce power on the output. And then you've got an output. So, so what comes out of the output? Well, it turns out what comes out of the output is some number times the difference between the positive and negative, um, or the non-inverting and inverting voltage inputs. So it's always the non-inverting minus the inverting. And um, it's limited though. The most, the most positive it can be is up to positive Vs, actually usually a little bit below the source um, voltage. And it can go down to uh, negative Vs or maybe a little bit above that. So it's bounded. Now what about N? What is N? Well, the only thing you really need to know is N is big. N is approximately 10,000, 100,000, it doesn't matter. A small voltage difference is basically gonna push this up to be pos plus Vs or minus Vs. So, so there really isn't and, and also, I should say, it's not exacting. Most, uh, most op amps are not made to exact specifications. So um, you might be able to dig in the data sheet and find out what N is, that, what that amplification factor is. But the key is to stop worrying about it, forget about it, and build circuits using, um, using the op amp as it is, with N just assuming N is quite large. So I'm going to go through some circuits next, and we're going to look at um, how they work and what they're good for. Before I jump into the first circuit, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the op amps that I'll be using. So here's a dual op amp, the pinout that I'm going to be using. Um, notice both op amps share the positive source voltage and the negative source voltage, um, which are on pins 8 and 4. And then you have basically one op amp on one side of the chip, and the other op amp on the other side of the chip. Um, and you can get single package op amps, basically one op amp per chip, but then often you have um, you know, pins on the chip that are not wired up uh, to anything. And Or you can get quads. I like the duals because um, with these chips, uh, basically, um, you can, you're using all the pins and you can generally put the op amp circuitry for one op amp on one side, the other op amp on the other side of the chip. Um, but with quads, you know, you've got a lot of potential resistors, capacitors. If you're using all surface mount, that can be fine. You can fit them all in there, but I just find it gets a little too, uh, too crowded. So I like these dual op amp ones. So I, I'm using uh, the LM358N which is uh, just a sort of general purpose um, op amp. 
So what are we going to do? Well, the first circuit I'm going to talk about is one I talked about before. This is the voltage follower. This is a really nice circuit. This effectively decouples the input from the output voltage. Um, basically, because and this is an important concept for, for op amps, the, an ideal op amp takes no current going in these input sources. Um, a real op amp, it'll be, it'll be nanoamps coming in, very small amounts of current. So effectively, this, you can consider this a high impedance wall. So for example, if you don't want any of this voltage running through the rest of your circuit, you want to keep this part of the circuit separate, um, you can put in an op amp in this configuration, and this bit, part of the op amp will power your circuit, but it'll maintain the voltage on the output that it has in the input. And the basic way this works is through negative feedback. The op amp is going to do what it can via the feedback mechanism to make sure the non-inverting and inverting inputs are as close together as possible. In order to do that, it's going to raise V out or lower V out to be approximately equal to V in. So it'll match that. Then you'll get very little difference between the non-inverting or the inverting and the non-inverting input. And you're basically going to have V out equal to V in. Now, no current's going to come through here. The op amp will supply current from its voltage sources, or its source power that's coming into it, which I haven't shown, um, to the output. Now, op amps can't supply a huge amount of current, usually 20 to 60 milliamps. This is less than you, you have on a 555 chip, which can probably do about 200 milliamps or so. So you're not going to get a lot of current out of them. But the point is you're not going to lose any current going in the input. And there's gonna, there are ways that we can basically provide a little more power out here that we'll get to later. So I have set up a voltage follower right here. Uh, in the middle there, there's the LM358N uh, op amps. I'm, I'm using the op amp on one end. It, I, if I were uh, not prototyping or being more careful, I would probably wire up the other end um, basically into a voltage follower with the input um, set to ground or something right in between the two um, voltage sources. Um, but I'm not that concerned about it right now. Um, this, let's see, this gray wire is connecting my output to my inverting input. This yellow wire is coming from the potentiometer and bringing in my input, my non-inverting input. And then I'm just sending this out to my meter, this orange wire. And what we can see, if we look at the meter, is that if I change the input voltage, it was at one volt before, so it's at the right voltage. If I change the input voltage, I'm changing the output voltage. Now we can sweep it all the way down to minus five volts. That works fine. If I turn it all the way up, where I'm providing plus five volts on the input, notice it doesn't quite make it. We're, we're, we're maxing out at 3.8 volts. And it turns out with this op amp in particular, you're gonna be about 1.1 to 1.5 volts below your um, positive source voltage. It doesn't have a full edge to edge sweep. That is, it can't, it can't uh, output a voltage that's close to the V plus um, source. Um, and different op amps are different. Most uh, general purpose op amps will not go completely edge to edge. Some of them will, won't go completely to V minus. They might get a little bit closer on V plus source. Um, but you see it saturates a little bit below the five volt um, V plus source. And that's pretty typical. Um, not to worry about that. It just uh, limits sort of your, your overall edge-to-edge -edge range on, on this. But by and large, over anything between minus 5 and plus 3.8 volts, we're able to match the input voltage. So this is the voltage follower circle circuit.
Now, if I if I plug anything into V out, um, into that orange wire right there, whatever currents that's taking and all that will be decoupled from this side. So I don't have to worry anymore about about putting a load on this um, potentiometer and that affecting the output voltage. So this is a, a really great system. It also brings us the first look at negative feedback. Negative feedback is basically a restoring type of feedback. Um, and this is going to be important for many of the applications that we're going of this uh, of this op amp.